next speaker, I'm uh, very pleased to be able to present David Bowden. And David has come to us from Nevada, from Truckee Meadows Community College, where he's a professor of geoscience. Uh, he's department chair for physical science. He has a PhD from Stanford and 15 years industry experience. And I'm very happy to turn it over to David, who's going to talk to us about geothermal programs. morning. I'd like to thank Kathy and the CREATE team for giving us the opportunity or me the opportunity to talk to you this morning. <clears throat> what I'd like to do today is uh, talk about three things. I'd like to sort of share with you uh, some of the geology of Nevada and the Great Basin and how it provides the potential to make Nevada the geothermal capital of the United States talk a little bit about the different types of geothermal systems, and thirdly, um, what Truckee Meadows Community College is going to do to exploit this potential. <clears throat> I'd like to acknowledge my co-author here, Jim Nichols, who has been instrumental in developing this program. We call it the Geothermal Plan Operators Program, or GPOP for short. All right, as for the geology, um, there are two main uh, settings for the geothermal systems out in Nevada and the Great Basin. One are magmatic systems. Those are systems that are heated by molten rock at depth. But most of the systems in Nevada are what we call extensional systems. And I'll talk a little bit more about what that means in just a moment here. Magmatic systems are typically found along the margins of the Great Basin, and they're usually associated with young, less than one and a half million year old volcanic rocks. Good examples of this would be the Steamboat Complex just south of Reno, and the Coso Complex in the Mojave Desert. The extensional systems are basically associated with young, what we call normal faults, that thin the crust and bring hot rocks from depth close to the surface. And good examples of these systems are the Dixie Valley Complex out uh, in eastern Churchill County, east of uh, Reno, Nevada, and the Bayawawi system out near, uh, on the way towards Elko in northeast Nevada. Here's a picture of the uh, Galena 3 geothermal power plant uh, at the south end of Reno. You can see Reno. Let's see if this little laser, yeah, there it goes. Is that working? There we go. This is the Galena 3 system right here, and here's Reno just off in the distance. The steamboat complex actually provides enough power to serve all the residential needs of Reno and Sparks put together. Here is a view of the Dixie Valley complex, part of the extensional systems here. And you can see in the background of the facility, this is the, um, hmm, I think this battery is <laughs> going here. That dramatic backdrop there is the Stillwater Range, and there is a major fault. Now, nope, that's not going to work. <laughs> at the base of the range, which is being tapped, channeling fluids that are being tapped by the geothermal complex there in Dixie Valley. This is a map of uh, Nevada and the Great Basin here. And um, this is the margin of the Great Basin. And what this map shows here, obviously this is the outline of Nevada. Power plants, existing power plants are the purple stars. Active projects are the blue stars, and then all the yellow and red dots are ongoing prospects that are currently being evaluated. 
The magmatic systems, like now here's Coso down here. This is Mammoth or Caso Diablo, just north of Bishop. Here's the steamboat complex over here. And then on the other side of the Great Basin is the Roosevelt Cove Fort. Again, the little yellow boxes indicate young volcanic rocks. But you can see that most of the existing power plants, ah, it's not working, are not associated with those young volcanic rocks and lie in the interior of the Great Basin or Nevada, and they're associated with the extensional type systems. Oh, great. Thank you, John. Yes. The man. <laughs> Thanks, John. OK, so and then over here, these are these grassroots exploration plays that are currently being evaluated by several different geothermal companies. McGinnis Hills uh, right over here is being evaluated for ORMAT and looks like it has the potential for about 50 megawatts. And let me just say that may, one megawatt is uh, the power that can provide the energy for 1,000 homes, just to give you a perspective on that. So what's the deal about why go around, uh, bother about classifying these systems as magmatic or extensional? Well, here's a graph that kind of illustrates some of the benefits or differences of, of both. Here we've got uh, depth over here, temperature along the uh, x-axis here. The uh, warm colored some are those uh, geothermal systems that are heated by magmatic fluids at depth. The green or the blue ones here are those that are the extensional systems. And we can see that the magmatic systems are hotter, closer to the surface. So that has two implications. One implication, you don't have to drill as deep. It's less expensive. The other implication, <coughs> excuse me, is that it provides generally more power. Uh, you can develop flash plants that produce more power for a given amount of fluid than in the other kinds, which are the binary systems. And I'll get to those in just a second here. So it's important to classify these. And uh, geologists do that. It helps plan for the type of geothermal facility that we're going to have. So what makes the Great Basin so special? First of all, the crust is being stretched. When you stretch something, you thin it. When you thin it, you bring hotter rocks closer to the surface. So that allows a higher heat flow. Also, when you stretch the rocks, you break it. You produce many faults. Those faults provide pathways for fluids. You must have fluids to transfer the heat from the hot rocks to the geothermal plant. And Nevada is seismically active. That means there's frictional heating due to earthquakes. So we got all these ingredients coming together to make Nevada very prospective. This is a um, uh, heat flow map modeled based on uh, surface measurements of heat flow and we've, what they've done here. This is from David Blackwell and others at Southern Methodist University. And you can see that temperatures at six kilometers depth are over 200 degrees Celsius. And you can see that it focuses largely on Nevada. <clears throat> so let's take a look at exactly what's going on in the Great Basin right now. <clears throat> the Great Basin has the largest number of geothermal power plants in the United States. 17 facilities with a current production capacity of about 800 megawatts. And again, one megawatt provides the power for 1,000 residential homes. 